sense. So. There we go. There, I killed the radio all together. I was the only one in here for a little bit, so I need some background tunes. Not a problem at all. I got turn it I'll have that off once I start going through explaining how to add all the fruit types, but uh, just making sure I still got the right working one here. Let me just make sure. Pretty sure it'll take it this way as well. Let's see. There's our corn. Should create our pallet right over here. There we go. Corn pallet. Good, good, good. Much better. No problem. No problem. Yeah, I just had it on. I was all by myself. So, uh, figure until I get some guys around here, then I'll get it fired up and get started here. I'll start it here shortly. Just want to make sure everything's still working good. It's, yeah, it's like 805 here. So just making sure everything's working. Everything. Yep. No errors on logs. So we're no, uh, good deal. Hope everybody's doing good this Friday night. Getting all ready for Christmas. Hope everybody's uh, getting their shopping done and getting ready for Santa Claus coming. Alright, all right, so that looks good. It looks working. Let me just double check my capacity. It should be 4,000. Let's get drop these off. Lunch meat 12. Thanks for the follow. Just gonna do a quick, not a quick, but a modding class. I missed out on last week. I came down with some, just wasn't feeling too hot. I want to make sure I got up this, got this one up for you guys. So you, do this one and then uh, when Dave uh, adds his fruit types in uh, for Pleasant Valley 17, we will be able to add those in as fruit types also if you're interested in adding the pallets. Hey, Gordon Leo Marks, how you doing? So I see it here. Let's make sure I touch this. Yep. Alright, so 46. Yep. Alright, there are 4,000. There we go. Perfect. Hope everybody's doing good tonight. Like I said, I'm just waiting. I did an impromptu show here. I apologize. It was unannounced. And, uh, I realized Dave's uh, out having some Christmas parties, so making sure he's having a good time. I wanted to make sure at least give you guys a little something and maybe buy some time if he gets back soon enough. That looks good. Let me go try another fruit type here. Let's see what else we got. I'm also trying out a new uh, internet connection here. So I got a uh, upgrade of my cell phone. I try using a service called T-Mobile, and uh, where I live, unfortunately, T-Mobile uh, failed pretty pretty miserably. Unfortunately, uh, I, just, I just lived too far out, and it didn't cover. Actually, uh, the T-Mobile phone uh, started using uh, AT&T network. So it's kind of funny. AT&T network reached out here, but uh, just uh, unfortunately, I can't beat what Verizon. Wireless has to offer me. They are they are fantastic. They are where I live. They are a great provider. Don't uh, me wrong. A little expensive, but you get what you pay for. Let's here. Swing around and put some canola in here. And I should be able to get. What's nice is about this little trailer. Oops! If I don't hit the. So, there we go. There on the. Okay, what's nice about this great little trailer? This metal tech is holds eight thousand. So it's actually basically now that I increase the capacity of these pallets, it's now four thousand each. So it works out really good. As long as I don't bump it, I'm in good shape, but I'll let that fill up. Let me come over here. And again, the reason I you know, you know, I show you guys how to add the labels on the pallets and everything else, so we'll be good to go. Of course it's going to stop. It's a little too high. So the only thing I wish... I mean, they, they do have some mods out there with the pal the camera right on the power for us. But, there you see, we got 4,000 dollars As I mentioned the other night, they do have mass in here quite a lot. So, when you do go to lift it, it's uh, the 4,000 does make a difference. You're doubling up on 
uh, what the standard pallet is, which is, which is 2,000. But I at least want to get started here. And uh, now we have about uh, 18, 20 people in the room. I'm going to get started here and show you guys how to do this with the, the factory conveyor belt. So I'll leave, leave this here. Let me quit the game and we'll get to it. Show you guys some, play some exciting stuff and you enjoy it. So let's see what we got. Alright, so first thing we're going to do, uh, once this closes down for me here, is on my class folder. There we go. So first thing I'm going to do is fire up my Giants Editor. And I did upgrade my Giants Editor so it will not bark at me anymore. Hey, hey, Scott Anime, how you doing? So thankfully, what I'm going to do is just say new mod from game. And we're going to scroll down to find uh, the conveyor, which is the RH. Yeah, I might just set the pull back up this list. Unfortunately, it goes by like the model number. There it is, the RH2460. Hey, Memoir, how you doing? Just uh, wanted to make up for you guys last week. I missed out last week because I wasn't feeling too good. So I wanted to make sure I got a, a, the show and I wanted to get in, which is a conveyor. Um, adding the, the, all the standard fruit types to this conveyor and with a little label on. And then when Dagenet comes along, uh, PV17, we'll add other crops to it as well. I like lavender, so forth, uh, oats, rye, all those good things. So what I do is, uh, just for the people that just got here, we're going to do... Uh, I'll do it one more time. It says new mod from game. And then what we're doing is we're going to select the store item R, RH2460. That tells me all the information we need. Hit OK. Now, where I want to save this, I'm going to change my working directory. Just to show you guys. Is I created a class folder. And there it is. We're going to select that folder. Hit OK. Preparing. There we go. So now there's our conveyor. So now we also created our mod. Everything should be in there. Let's see what we got. So there's our conveyor. As you notice, they, they did something a little different uh, with the effects. Uh, this might not appear. Don't be scared. This is how it is in game. This is how it is when you open up in the Giants folder. So this is proper. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing's missing. Don't be scared. Um, so let me just save that. Now let me open our class folder. It's funny, I have a class underscore folder. That's probably where I saved it. There it is. Okay, not a big deal. It's kind of funny. I thought I selected class folder, and it's kind of funny how it went to class underscore folder, ah, which is no big deal. So there's all our files that are required. Now, uh, as we did with the other ones, we'll start with the mod description. As we see, not all the information is here that we need. So what we have to do is what I'll do is I'm going to show you the one that I already did and I'll show you what needs to be added. Just to make sure I didn't memorize this all fan because all this information is currently available uh, to what I'm you know what I did because I already did it this way. So let me just move to another view so I can show you what's missing. So currently it says author uh, whatever you can change it to whoever you like. Uh, so this one I'll just do uh, my name, and of course I do Giants, and Giants, if I put a space in there, Giants Software, oops, I better put it all caps, alright, so there's that, that's the first part of the version, is a version 1, um, if you want to do like a beta, you could do like a 0, Point zero, etc. Um, and you don't have to go out this far either uh, if you don't plan on releasing too many versions. Uh, for instance, you can just leave it. At, I'll leave it at 1.0. Next thing it's looking for, like we we done before, it's going to look for uh, the icon file name, and of course it looks for icon.png. It will not accept that. So what we need to do, as we did with other mods, is all I do is I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I will just copy this. I'll do a paste, and then make sure you grab the right one here, because I have the dash copy, which is correct. So all I'm going to do is just do this. So instead of being store, 
We're going to do icon. Now, it looks like a, a lot of text, so what I'll do is just hit, I'm going to hit, highlight it, control C, copy, however you like to do it. Go over here to our icon name, highlight this, do paste, there's exactly it done. There's no no margin for typo. Uh, now, as, it, as you see here, it's listed as a PNG, which is fine. It's not going to throw an error, it's not going to throw a warning, uh, whether it's PNG or DDS. Uh, so no worries. Either way is acceptable. So for this instance, I'm going to leave it as PNG, um, just to follow suit. Now what it's also going to need, as you guys see over here, it needs a description and a title, which they don't include here. Like I said, it'd be nice if Giants even just gave you a blank one and say, all right, you need to fill this in. It's just nothing, you know, or fill in here or something, but it's, it's okay. Uh, we know to do this, so it's not a problem. So what I'm going to do is grab the description and the title from over here. Now, I could also just type it over here as well, and it's not a problem. So, I want to do underneath a version. It doesn't, it's not critical where it goes, but I just like to keep things standard. So, I'm calling it the Grim RH 2460 All Standard Fruit. You can name it whatever you like. Uh, this is how I named it, uh, just to keep things simple. And then moving along, the icon file name. Now, one more line we need to add in that's not in here is to let people know, hey, is this uh, multiplayer compatible? Uh, it absolutely is. Uh, the only thing I'm doing to it is adding additional fruit. We did test this on a dedicated server, and it works fine as well. So what I'm gonna do is paste this over here, and there's all our information for the mod description. So, just compare notes to anything we added. Uh, like I said, as we added the author, change the version type to 1.0, as opposed to this, uh, 1.0.0.0. The title, which needs to be added in for it to, to grab the information because it needs a title, it needs a description, it needs an icon file name, and this can't be icon PNG. It needs to be icon underscore uh, certain item uh, dot PNG. Multiplayer support, uh, true or false, in this case it's true, and the store item, uh, where it's going to be refer referencing the XML file, which currently is grim rh2460.xml, which is good. We're good to go there. So I will close out this one I already created. This is our new one, which we're good to go. Let me close out that. So step one is done. Mod description editing is done. The next step we need to do is go into the vehicle XML. And I like I need to look at this, which is fine. Uh, vehicle type we're not touching. Store data. The name uh, RH2460. What we're going to do is, again, I'll... I'll just pull this up because I already did do it, but I'll show you. We're just going to add in all fruits uh, just to help the naming standard so you know which one you're pulling from. So let me go over to here, and I'll pull this up through Documents, Mods, and I'll open this one up here as well. Okay, so now we have both. This is the one that's complete. This is the one that's not complete. So just compare notes. Um, I believe this one is complete. Maybe I didn't do the... Did I just switch them? Yeah, I probably switched them. Let me see here. Let me make sure I got the right one. Okay, that's that. And that's that one, all right. That's that one, good. Did I not edit this one correctly? Well, I might not have. Okay, so let me go back over to here. See if I have another one available, which I know I do. Interesting that I don't have that filled out. I could have sworn I had that filled out. I had so many files I was working on here. Okay. So be it. I do not. Okay. Not a problem. So we're going to fill it out as we go. Let's go back to this one. Pull up as a reference sheet. Even though I did not fill in that information, which is odd. So. There's the old one. Move to the review. So here we're going to go move down. This is our new one that we just created. And here it says the RH 2460. I'm going to open my mod description. And we're going to call it the 2460 All Standard Fruit. So let me grab this. Copy. Go over to here. Put it in a space All Standard Fruit. Awesome. Function it is a pallet packer. So we're not going to adjust anything there. This is what exactly what it's going to be. And we're going to leave it at that. 
Next item is the Storegrim RH2460, which is fine. Nothing to touch there. Daily upkeep, lifetime. All these items we're not going to change. Feel free if you want to adjust any of these items. For instance, lifetime. If you want it to last longer or shorter. The rotation when you buy it, how it comes in the store, feel free. It's, uh, I find with it being zero. That way you spec up to it. It's the, the rear is facing the store and the attacher point is facing away from the store, which I think is pretty standard. Um, as I move along down here, we're going to go through the wheels. We're not going to touch. That's all fine. The input attacher joint, good to go. Fill root, fill root node, fill mass node is exactly the way you want to be. Exact. Don't want to touch any of these items. It's all good. If we start messing with any of these, we'll get an index out of range error. That index does not exist, so we do not want to do that. Uh, the fuel units. Now, as we know, guys, the standard uh, conveyor will take potatoes and sugar beets with a capacity to 16,000, which is fine. Uh, basically, 16,000 and uh, the standard pallet is 2,000 per, so we know it'll make eight pallets, either of potatoes or sugar beets. Now, what we need to add in here is our other fill types. So, what we'll do is we're just going to add one at a time, just to show you that we'll do one, and then we do the rest uh, in bulk. Um, basically add all the rest in. We're just going to do one just to make sure that goes in smoothly and go from there. So first one we'll add in is barley. So what we want to do is just add in barley and put a space. So now we're going to take barley, potato, sugar beet. Okay. Now let's move along. The capacity is fine. We're not touching that. That has to do with the conveyor. The fill volumes we're not touching. Receiver hopper. I'm not touching any of these items. Move down to here. Now we got a new item. We have the box fill type, which is potato. And as you notice, it is calling it from the data objects palette palette uh, palette potato i3d file, which is basically the in-game uh, palette for the potatoes. So the key item here is we need to add in our barley. Well, unfortunately, there is not a barley one. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you how I did it, which basically we need to go down here, and then we're going to have to do copy this, and we're going to add another line in, which basically just um, put it right here, and we're going to call it barley. Okay, there is our barley fill type. Now, unfortunately, there is no barley palette. So we can't do a pallet and then barley. It just will not work out. It won't th it'll throw an error because this item does not exist. So what we need to do is actually create the pallet barley. So what I'm going to do is create my own directory. So I'm calling the pallets forward slash. And that needs to be the key is for uh, the US trailer uh, for the f um, or any other trailer that has the auto loading script. The key is it needs to have palette as a prefix, I want to call it. So basically, I'm calling this part as a prefix. This part is a suffix. So all the prefix needs to be palette and then whatever item it may be. So in this case, we're doing palette. And now another thing to watch is it needs to be capital B. So it picks up on it. So it'll be palette barley.i3d. That's how I'm labeling it. Just to follow suit. As you tell, they do palette potato. Now they do palette sugar beet. And they did this even back in 15, uh, how they do the sugar beet one. Sugar beet, for some reason they do not only capital S, they also do a capital B, which is fine. Uh, it's neither here nor there. It's something they've been doing since 15, since 13. You know, it's, it's something they're following naming system. It's fine. Uh, you know, it's no worries. Just follow suit and you're good to go. That's the only fill type that does that, as far as my knowledge. Uh, all the other ones are just the first letter is capitalized. So what I'm doing here is adding barley. Now what I'm going to do is I'm calling for this folder to be pallets and then pallets barley or pallet barley dot i3d. So we know where we're calling it from. And as we scroll down, that is the only item we need to currently add in. So I'll save that, which I just did already. And then I'll minimize this. Now, what I need to do is create that. As you see over here in the class folder, there is no folder. So we're going to call it. We're going to start by, hey, Mezman, how you doing? Start by creating a folder called pallets. So there's that. Now, the key is, we're going to notice, like I said before, I'll open this back up. 
right here, we're going data, objects, palettes, palette, potato, dot i3d. So, what I'm going to do is, let me minimize this, and let me double check if Giants will let me do this. We'll do it, there's many ways to do this, but I don't believe, no, it's it wouldn't create a mod, it's not existent. So what I need to do is go down to C, whoops, x86, farming sim, data, vehicles, oh, it wasn't under vehicles, it was, do do do, objects, pallets, and look down here, there's our pallet potato, pallet poplar, power, pallet sugar beet, so, the key is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the potato one, because it only has one capital in it, I won't, I won't mess it up, so what I'll do is I'll click on this, say yes, Okay, now, notice how it's labeled and how it's set up, so what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll focus in here. Hey, there's the potatoes. It has the fill plane. It has the, the palette, the palette skin, which is fine. How it's labeled is fillable palette. And again, it's a little bit different in the XML, how it has the fillable palette. It has basically a palette as a suffix and a fillable as a prefix and in its lowercase, uh, except for the P in the palette. So what I'll do is I'll hit File. And let me do export all with files. Class folder. Let me go back because uh, Giants created an underscore one. Here it is. Now, if you remember, we named this one just to follow. So, show you where I'm going is palette barley. So, I'm going to label this one as palette barley. Hit save. Do you want to keep the structure of the parent directory? Yes, I do. Hit save. Okay. There, that is now saved. And let me go back to here. Minimize this. And then in here in our class folder, there it is. Palette Barley. It has the tree sapling palette diffuse, which if we open this, You'll see that's called the tree sapling palette diffuse, tree sapling palette normal, tree sapling palette specular. Okay. Now, as you notice, it's doing dots, the dot dot forward slash, which means it's trying to look for that in the default directory. Uh, that will not work. So what we need to do is grab these files that are missing. Now, in this case, it's potatoes. Um, in our case, we don't want the potatoes because we're not using potatoes. We're actually using barley. So let me scroll out of here. I'm going to show you what I did. And let me just double check to correct myself. Yep, okay. So what I did also is in the palettes, I'm also going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it fill planes. So what I'm doing with this is I'm actually to fill planes in from the standard products. So if I go back to my program x86, Forming Simulator 2017, data, fill planes. Okay, long story short, there are a lot of items in here, and it's a big folder. Uh, just to give you an idea, it's a 16 meg file. Now, uh, it doesn't sound that much, which isn't too bad, but we don't need all those items right now. So what I'm gonna do just for now to show you guys is we're gonna do the barley. So we we'll grab these three items of the barley, I'm going to hit uh, copy. We're going to do paste. There's our three fill. We now have diffuse, normal, specular, all of barley. Okay. So the next item we need is as you will go back to here. So do the edit. And it's one step at a time. And again, it says take your time. And once we do one, you'll see the pattern and we'll be able to do the others as well. So in this case, it is fill planes, forward slash, and it's barley. Let's see, it goes for this one. Same goes for this one. Okay. Now, we got the fill planes covered, so make sure this all matches. Fill planes barley, diffuse normal specular, good. Next item we need to get is the alpha test disable shader so what we need to do is go back over here one more time go to here 
Oops, which is the old one. Let me open up. It is fill planes. Here it is. Go back to data. We will find our shaders. And it was the alpha test disable shader. Okay. Best thing my recommendation would be to do is in here is add shaders folder. If I could type, there we go. There, shaders folder. Again, with all these items, guys, make sure to copy and don't don't cut and paste. Do a copy and do a paste. That way you know you're gonna have all the files there you need and you'll be good to go. And again, one more time, we'll go back here to edit. We know we have shaders and there's our new file path. This is basically just pointing to our new file path here that we're creating and not the default one because it will not work uh, when, when doing mods, uh, especially in the i3D. When it references, it'll say it can't be found. So if we did a good job, we should be able to open this up and not have any errors in Giants Editor. Good news, no errors. Now, let me do a focus. There's our barley. As you guys noticed before, it was potato, sugar beet, uh, just those two items. We now added barley in. Now, step one, we, we got the pallet of barley now. Uh, so, fill a little pallet. Another thing we need to change in here, how this is set up is a little bit different. It's similar to almost a fabric script type style where it has attributes built right in the i3D. Um, you noticed that we didn't have a quantity or capacity set up on this pallet. Basically, a default for a fillable pallet in Giants is 2,000. So you won't get, if you don't have a value in there or define the integer value in Giants Editor, uh, it'll default to 2,000, which is not a big deal. It, this is standard of all pallets. It just comes down to when you start getting a lot of animals, if you use these for feeding or even as an extra storage, there it does become quite... Um, you'll get a quite a lot of them, and it becomes a little bit cumbersome. So I figure if we did 4,000 eventually, uh, it'll, it'll be good value. Like I said, it goes into... I'm going to try to keep a nice even numbers that go into what the max capacity of that conveyor is, which it is 16,000. So 16, you know, like I said, it goes two. We have eight pallet, or with 2,000 per pallet. We have eight pallets. With 4,000 per pallet, we have four. So what I'm going to do also is change this. Change the fill type, the barley, make sure to hit enter. Go back, double check, it's not barley. Okay guys, we've now successfully created the pallet barley. I'm ready to go test this, I'm hoping it works. We shall see. So again, let me open up my XML. This is the mod description. This is class underscore folder. We call it pallets and then pallet barley. So that's what I did here. That's what I did over here. Like I said, we're going to do I just add the barley for now, and I'll add in the other fruit types. This is, I just want to make sure we did one correctly, and then we'll make sure we'll do the rest as well, just to follow suit. So the next item I need to do is just zip this up. Press zip. Okay. We're going to call this... Oh, apparently it called it ballots for me. We'll rename this to rh underscore 24-60 underscore all standard fruits, ASF. There we go. Let's give this a whirl. So I want to do, just for testing purposes, I'll go here. I'll copy. I'll do a paste. Use my mod folder selector. Select test. This is a pallet of potatoes I can close out of. We do not want to save. It's the last thing we want to do. Okay. Next thing you do, let's fire up Farming Sim to see how we did. So let's see if our pallets of barley are good without any problems. Alright. Kick me back to the maze. Right, let's try this again. There we go. Yes. Did it select my wrong folder? It looks that way. Okay, let's try selecting the right folder. Class mod. There we go. 
Try this again, one more time. My door is screwed. All right, guys, hold on. What? Yes, you're you're correct, Amaki. Absolutely, I selected the wrong folder. That's my own fault here. Let's try to get back. There we go. There we go. Yes, continue. And I need to select the mod. My bad. Yep, yep, yeah. I I caught it afterwards, and I'm just trying to start it up here. Let's check it out. Yes. Ugh. I keep doing it again. One more time. <laughs> Third time's a charm. It's a simple little thing as I, I quit. There we go. All right. Let's try it again. Career. That's funny. It won't let me. Let's go back. All right. Career. Interesting. All right. Huh. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's not letting me select my mods here. I'm going to go back one more level. That's odd. Is it not loading correctly? Let's see here. That is the first time I ever came across that. Oh, well, there we go. That's what I was looking for. That's why it's not asking me for selecting any. Oh. The Friday night might need more coffee. Alright, let's do this. It doesn't like this, I'll be honest with you. That's what it was. So if I put a underscore in between the 24 and the 60, I'm sure it'd be fine. But because I had a question there, it doesn't know how to comprehend and, and handle it. So what I'll do is load this up. There it is. Okay. So if you guys are just joining, I'm just showing how to add standard fruit types to the RH2460 conveyor. Uh, we're just currently adding barley at the time. Um, but we're going to be adding all the standard fruits uh, as we speak. So let me go and purchase this in store. And there it is. And again, we can modify it. I just leave this plain. I mean, make sure my log is clean, that there's no more errors that's screaming at me. And it looks good. Everything looks clean. Everything looks acceptable. So we're good there. I'm going to purchase one just to make sure we're, we're golden and there's no issues. Perfect. Okay, now let's see if we could get a, create a pallet of barley. And I'm going to apologize now because I'm going to think it's going to take me a little while to get over there. Let me see if it'll let me hook up to my truck. Yes, must have more coffee. <laughs> Again, I sorry I missed out on the show last Friday for you guys. And, you know, Dave's been cranking along doing some work, but uh, oh, this doesn't hook it up. All right. So I'm going to have to take the long haul. I apologize for the tractor. I'm not sure where I got the... I think the fastest tractor in here is the fit. Fa uh, the there we go. Let's crank this up. But uh, wasn't feeling too well last week. Feeling much better this week. And uh, we'll make sure to get you guys a good show. I'm going to get you caught up here at how to add the standard fruit. Um, and then, like I said, it, once Dave is happy with adding the fill types for his map, I will make sure to update this conveyor to, to accept all the fill types of PP-17. Okay. So we are hooked up. It's going to take a little bit for me to get there, but I will get there. And I'll show you guys how it'll make sure it'll accept uh, the barley and create the barley pallet. Um, this will be up on YouTube. And uh, there is also a link. Yeah, thanks, man. Eh, it's one of those things, you know, it's a bug going around. My son wasn't feeling well. My wife had it a little bit sooner. It's only a matter of time before, you know, kind of strikes everybody in the house, but it's all good. Just glad I'm back this Friday. I wanted to give you guys a show. I know Dave's out. Christmas parties, so he's having a good time, which is good. I'm glad he's getting out and having a good time. He deserves a nice break from uh, map making. So, you know, he's putting in a tremendous amount of hours. He's doing a great job. So I'm just trying to, trying to help get you guys understand if you want to add the, the standard fruit types to this conveyor, I'll get you there. And at the end of the show, I'm going to give you a link, and you guys can, uh, you know, download this and, and try it out. Give it a run. I'm going to show you how to add, add, add strips. Uh, but like I said, we're just going to do barley for now. Just making sure my log is clean, which it is. Uh, make sure this conveyor works the way it's supposed to. Uh, but unfortunately, the farm is a little bit far away from the shop, and just using a standard gold crest map for now to, to get there, so we can just show it works with uh, you know to get the maps you guys currently have.
just can't wait till they go through that uh, the 64 fill type barrier. That's going to be uh, exciting, exciting times because then uh, basically it releases the cap. I'm going to call it in your imagination of what you could come up with, and uh, you know, it's, you know, a couple new things we came up with for 17, and I look forward to even adding more once uh, that limit is uh, that cap is removed. So I normally just lower the conveyor. Again, unfortunately, I didn't do anything to the artwork, which you can add your own logos, feel free. Specify it any way you want. Just, should, just so you know it's something different than the in-game one. Uh, but uh, let me see here. Oops, I'll keep tabbing. I thought I had a truck tractor down here. Here it is. There we go. All right, so let's go fill up with some barley and make sure our conveyor takes it. Start filling wheat, barley. Now, I did not increase capacity of the pallet as of yet, but I will soon, I promise. Just want to get this one out of the way. Let's unload here. Ooh, barley's not accepted. That's good. All right, good. I broke it already. <laughs> so, let me back it up. Let me do a quick save, and this is where the fun gets in. Make sure I added it all in and hit back. I'm telling, I, I'm already know what I didn't change, so we'll check it out here. Okay, I'm telling, I'm pretty 99% sure I know what it is already. I'm sure as anybody else out there that started, uh, you know, that messes around with mods or get it working, you know exactly how it is. Uh, how many times you see that farming simulator screen? I'm sure you're tired of the music already. So let me go back into here, and let's see what we got, all right, this is the class folder, that's the other one, okay, so let me scroll down, I'm going to show you exactly what it was, all right, fill types, good, 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 yeah, I'm pretty sure I added, uh, I'm going to double check against what I got here, I'm pretty sure, let me double check in here, and... Built volume to trigger. Heh, <laughs> there it is, fellas. So, one extra step I forgot to tell you about is this, it's just not as simple as saving this out uh, when exporting. In the tip trigger, we need to make sure we add barley. Otherwise, our conveyor will not take barley, as it's telling us. So, I will save this. Yeah, the XML file was, was fine. It was the i3D. I knew I forgot one little thing, and that was adding it in the i3D file. So what I'll do is just copy. We'll paste it over here one more time, and we're good to go. Now, we should fire it up. I do have... Yes, yes, so close to the first try, but it's been so long since I... It's been a little while since I did this one, so I definitely need to hone my skills into this one. Now, the fun part is, which safe game did I use? There it is. Good. So, let's open her up. Alright, she is ready to go. Let's rock and roll, and fingers crossed. And see if Barley is accepted at her conveyor. Fun part is trying to Try to see if we can line this up without upsetting the fare too much. Let's see what we got here. Okay, three, two, one. There we go. That's more like it. Now, oh, guess what else I forgot to do? I'll show you in a sec. For some reason, they do. I'll show you guys. It's an interesting little tracker. Every time you restart the game, this little feature here in your controls menu is called Enable Palette Creation. Every time you start the game, it does not hold that value for this conveyor. So every time you get in, you will have to Enable Palette Creation. And when you do that, there goes our barley. So 
Now, let me get a front end loader to get up there to to get up there to verify our fill volume is two fa quantity of 2000. So I can go over here. All right, that's filling up. And then once it once it fills a pallet, uh, unfortunately, it's not like it's on the automatic shifter like the sheep pallet, the wool pallets. It will stick out there, unfortunately, until you go and move it. So what I'll do is we're gonna get my forks here. Back up, grab my forks. Go back up here and just verify we're at 2,000. Make sure we have no errors. Okay. Good deal. No errors. Because if this pallet, if I had any errors in creating a pallet, it would, it would bark at me, no doubt. Okay, let me go down. Okay, and once I move that pallet out of the way, there she goes. She starts filling up another one, which is great. Now, like I said, in single player, it's not a problem. It's going to show me the quantity of 2,000, and it's going to show me the fill type of barley. There's our barley. And obviously you can't move it by hand. And start filling our another pallet, which is great. Okay, so we added barley. Now the fun part is we have to go back and do this. Uh, what we're going to do one more for barley, so we completed one complete pallet, is um, what I'll do is I'll show you guys how we do the rest. And then we'll add in the sta other standard fruit types, and then we'll be good to go. So let me save this where we're at. And we'll save this, save. Okay, good to go. And we'll go back in their fruit types. Now there is one you can use as, as a. As I'll show you. Let me close that out. Okay. Let's close that out. Open this back up. Here is our class one. I can close this down for now, but basically you guys will see the idea. So we added barley, and as we did down here, we added barley down here. Now, as I said before, the potato and sugar beet ones are being called from the standard farming simulator folder. Um, it's fine if we don't mind having 2,000 for that, but we want to increase all our pallets across the board to be 4,000, as well as add in our, the little logo of, of the item that's in that uh, pallet. So, um, let me think about this here, and we'll do the potato next, then the sugar beet, and we'll have those two out of the way. But we can start up here even, so we're gonna have barley, potato, sugar beet. So what I'll do is I'll add them up here as I add them down here, just to be consistent. So what I'm gonna do is open up the potato one, and again, I wanna be consistent of how I do this. So we're gonna do pallets, again. So it's not calling it from the standard directory, it's actually calling it from our pallets folder, as well as the sugar beet one as well. So we're gonna be calling them from both of this, all these from the same directory. So obviously we're gonna do we we'll do the pallets of potato and sugar beet next. So what I'll do is I'll do the potato. I'll show you how we did that one. Similar to how we made the barley one, just a little less editing. And there's a faster way of doing it. Uh, and I'll do that here. Do recent, pallet potato. We'll do file, uh, save as. In this case, we're calling it pallet potato as long as my all right there we go pallet potato and it is potato good okay now remember just like we did with the barley oh that is wrong one that's what we're testing here we go is we have to update our pass again. See how we did all these? How it did it is this, which is fine. It's not a big deal. Real easy little fix. So again, let me get rid of this one just for now. It's going to be looking for potato, potato. The tree sapling one's already there. And the alpha test disable shader's already there. The only three we need to add are potatoes. So let me get rid of... And again, we'll get rid of this up to that point because we're just calling it from the fill planes folder. Get rid of this one more time. Fill planes folder. 
Oops. And I was back. My bad. Hey, KW, how's it going, man? Just catch these guys up on a show that I missed out on last week. I want to make sure get everybody up to speed on uh, just the standard fruit types into your conveyor. Or add any fruit type. So if you find another map that has a fruit type, you're now able to add them. Pretty painlessly, to be honest with you. I don't think it was too bad. Um, I missed one step in the first process there with a barley because it's been a while since I used it. So there we go. So there's our fill planes directory updated, the palace directory updated, and the shader directory updated. So we're good to go there. I'm just going to do a quick save. Now I know I didn't copy these yet, so I have to do that as well. Let's go back over here one more time. And we'll go back to our palace. Oops. Let me see here. Here we go. Oh, wow. Again. I should always keep that open. I always close things down. X86. Farm sim. Data. Fill planes. Now we did potatoes. So, anything listed as potato. Diffuse, normal, specular. Grab them all. Say copy. Go back over to fill planes. Do a paste. So now we have barley, potato. Let's verify my pallet of potato. Again, just double checking. I always do the double checking part. Fill planes, potatoes. Good to go. Alright, so if I open that, I should have myself some potatoes. And it's not referencing the in-game folder, which is what I want. Let's see how I did. Ah, good. Okay, I didn't grab those, so I gave it the wrong directory. Let's go back. Yeah, you don't ever want a save. So edit this. And get rid of pallets. There we go. Tree sapling, tree sapling. Tree sapling, beautiful. Should be the tickets. See if you're happy with me now. Yep, no airs. Good to go. Fill a pallet. Zoom in. There's our lovely potatoes. Fillable type. Fill type is potato. So we're good to go. So potatoes are copied over. So that way we can. The reason I'm doing it this way, guys, is just so we can edit the quantity. Uh, if we left, if you we were happy with 2,000, there's no need to do this. We're not happy with 2,000. Like I said, we want 4,000, and we're gonna do. Each field type. So it might be a little tedious here in the beginning, but believe me, it's, it's worth it in the end. Uh, as well as, so we added the potato. Next one we need to do is sugar beet. Now there's a couple ways you can do it. Welcome to Fantasy Island. Bravo Chick, thank you for the follow. Yes, potatoes. And we're going to do all the standard fruit types in Farming Sim 17. And then eventually work on the ones that PV17 are going to offer. Once we get the, the fruit type lifted, we're going to be happy campers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try making a shortcut here, guys. You get to watch it. If it fails, it fails, and I'll do it the long way. But if it doesn't fail, then then great. What I want to do is I'll do this. If I do this, okay. Do file, save as. Fingers crossed, and it should work. PA, palette, sugar, beet. All right, see how I do. Now, if my memory serves me correctly... Capital S, capital B. It should work. Let's try it. Save. Okay. We're going to do that. Now, one key is we don't have our fill plane yet. So let's go back over to our fill planes folder. Find the sugar beet. And that should be all those. It should be normal, diffuse, specular. We'll do copy. Go back over to our palettes, fill planes. Paste these in here. There's our sugar beet. Now, let's see if my shortcut worked out. Edit this. To potato, we're going to do... Ooh. This is... i got to slow down take my time. All right, see how sugar beet is, is lowercase s and capital B. And I want to make sure it's it's cap sensitive. Uh, otherwise, it'll just give you an error. But sugar... So we're replacing... And this is I could have done that as well, but... We're replacing potatoes with sugar beets, so hopefully that little shortcut would work. Let's let's see. So that the tree sapling says all the same. This is referring just basically to the pallet and the container itself. So no need to change that. Uh, and the shader never changes as well. That's always referencing the same file. So let's see how we did. See if we got sugar beets in here now. 
with that little shortcut. Fingers crossed. Oh, that didn't work. Okay. So, let's see what I did wrong. Ha! Huh. Who needs an S? Who needs an S? Rename. Uh, it. Sure got beets. We have potato, but we have sugar beets. There we go. Now, let me make sure I have that as sugar beet. See, we have a pallet as beet, but we have the fill plane as beets. Tomato, tomato, I guess. There we go. There's our lovely sugar beets. Boom. Did it. So, we did a little bit of a shortcut. I, I called a shortcut. We didn't go and copy out of the main folder. Now, we're going to do this with our fill types as well. So, to this point, we have everyone in our X vehicle XML should be done as well. So we have potato, sugar beet, barley. Okay, well that's a start. So now the fun part is, let's add the rest in. So let me go back over to here. This part I'll show you guys. Here's what I do. It's basically copy out. I know these are the additional ones. You can do one at a time. But I'm going to grab a whole bunch because I, I know that these need to be added. So it's going to be maize through wheat. Correct, Amaki. Absolutely. But that one didn't need to be changed because it was sugar beet. So sugar beet, oh, you're true. It should, let me double check that. We might have to actually change that. Which is probably the case. I'm sure it's probably potato. So there's the remaining of those. Let's go check it out. Sugar beet. Okay. Fillable. Yep. Sugar beets. So now let's verify sugar beet and not sugar beets and it's sugar beet. Singular. Alright. Good catch, Maki. That's why you got the extra cup of coffee in you. I didn't it's not kicking in yet here. So that is good. Sugar beet, good catch. And we'll save it. Now we're moving on to the next one, which we can do is maize. So I will just basically copy the barley down to here. And the palette will be M A I Z. If my memory serves me correctly, let's go down and look just to make sure. Yeah, everything is, like I said, it's just uh, sugar beets, a goofy one. Okay. So again, there's maize. And then another simple way is just to look at the fill planes. And what I would do is just compare. Now I'm going to try to do it on one screen, guys. Even though I'm used to working on two here, just to help me sort through. What I'm going to do is in my fill planes, just sort through what I need. So I already have barley. Uh, I definitely do need maize. So I'm going to look for in my list of, of fill plane is I need the maze. Now each each fill type normally has the three files. So it has the diffuse, normal, and specular. And you grab all these. So we grab the three maze. Uh, as well as if we wanted to, we can go ahead and grab the rape, which is uh, I think a really bad name, but I get it. It's, you know, we call it something different, but soybean would be next. So scroll along to soybean. Do, 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 do. Diffuse, normal, specular. Next would be sunflower. Sunflower, diffuse, normal, specular. You're getting the hint here. And sunflower, and then wheat. Diffuse, normal, specular. Okay. That should be an additional five items. So let me just do this. Do copy. And I should be done messing around with all the, the fill plane of in the game. And there they are. So we should have... Just to verify, we should have barley. Should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Come over here, we have barley. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We are good. So we have the eight fill types all filled in. We have their fill planes already, so we're one step closer. And just go down in here. And what I'm going to do is, we did the palette of maze. And we do this, control, well this, uh, 
Let me do it this way so you guys can see. Copy. Go down. We'll do paste this line. And I always, I'm just peculiar about this lining up. This, it's not critical. I just like to be neat about it. Let's see here, there. Okay, so we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One extra. Here it is. Okay, so we have palette maze. We need palette rape. Okay. Palette soybean, palette sunflower, oops, and palette wheat. There we go. So we should have all the palettes that we need. There we go. Saved. Palettes, blah, 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 blah. Change this over here. Barley. To maze. It's kind of it's sensitive about the caps part too. So just make sure you match of how it's the file name, how it's written, whereas the low, uh, lowercase first letter and then the capital of the product itself, except for Sugar Beet, which is our, our the one we always talk about. That is a unique one. Uh, but when it asks for the fill type, it is all lowercase. Uh, if it's, I think of his capital, it's going to throw an error. So there's sunflower, and then wheat. So we should have our eight. Excellent. So we should be good there for the XML file. Now we just need to create the other items, the other palettes, which is not a big deal. So we'll do that right now. Let me go back one. Uh, class folder. Okay. So let me just do the potato one. CB easiest. Do file, do save as, we will call it palette, and maze is next. M-A-I-Z-E, okay. Then what we can do is just drop out of here quick. There's our palette maze. Do our edit with notepad. Fill planes, and it'll be M-A-I-Z-E. Not that you guys need to know how to spell maze. But there we go. And that should do it. And we have to go in the i3D now. Like a Maki pointed out to me before. And make sure we change it to maze. There we go. Let's zoom in. Check it out. There's a cone. Big cone. Go here to the fillable palette. M-A-I-Z-E again, all lowercase. And that should be good to go. Save that one. And anyway, we have a maze. So we're up to a few. And what I'll do is I'll just use the barley again. Again, this, I usually just leave this open on the other page. Uh, next one is the rape, soybean, sunflower, wheat. Okay, so we'll do right next. Again, just go here, do file, save as. Again, capital for the first letter of the product, and rape. Then what I'll do down here is just change this while I'm at it. Hey, S7, how you doing? Ooh, new multi fruit script, cool. I hope it lifts that the fill type range. Uh, so Dave, uh, we can start cranking along on more fill types. Okay, so we change that fill type to rape, good to go. Yes, we'll save this. Okay, come over here to this, rape, edit, change the fill plane, rape, pop. <laughs> Oops, now I did it. There we go. Alright. Underscore normal. Fermenting silo, I saw that. Yeah, some cool stuff coming out. I'm liking it. I'm waiting for uh, this guy's name, RC Devil, to come out with his 
where he raises the the fill type limit again. I think last year around January he came out with or this year around January he came out. Alright, there's rape. Good deal. Don't have to save it. On to the next one, which is soybean. So let's open this. Do file, save as, we'll do pallets. Soybean again, it's caps on the first letter of the product. Fillable type, all lowercase. Good to go, go out. Change our pallet soybean, edit, and again, point it to soybean. Diffuse normal. Now, there are many ways you can do this, but this is what I find easiest for me. Uh, you can use uh, any method you like. Next one is sunflower. And then I'll show you guys how we're going to increase this bad boy too the quantity to override the standard in game one. Alright, so we did soybean, sunflower. There's sunflower.i3d. Change our fill type to sunflower. Stuck, good, save. Again, go back here, edit, and we will change this to sunflower. sunflower. There we go. Awesome. Should be good. Okay, next one is wheat. And that should be our last one. We're done, guys. We had all the standard fruit types. Not too bad, I hope, for you guys out there. And like I said, I'll give you a link. Uh, if you do an exclamation point mods, it should already be in there. Uh, so the latest one added in. Feel free. Download it. Go to it. Uh, but I figure if you want to learn how to add your own fruit types or want to do it yourself or change the quantities, I'm showing you how to do it right now. Do save as. We're going to do palette. And this time, like I said, it'll be wheat. Okay. Is that change our fill type wheat? Okay, save this should be good to go. Okay, there's our wheat. Should be the last one, so let's go through. Okay, barley maize rape, potato sugar beet. Okay, should be good. As of that one, and here's the one here. Pallets, potato sugar beet barley raise. Yep, looks good. All right, one more place we need to add it, guys. Let's go back over here, as we've seen uh, with the first hiccup that we came across with the tip trigger. You need to make sure we add them in here as well. What I'm going to do is just copy them right from this list. This is the same. So again, let's do copy. And we'll edit this out. There's all our fill types. Okay. Exactly as it matches in our vehicle XML for fill types. Now, another thing we need to add in is our price multipliers. So you can actually, I believe, I haven't messed around with this too much, you can actually change the price multiplier of the pallet. So you can have it, I believe, change how much a pallet's worth. So right now it's currently one to one. So you're, or I believe, let's see, I don't know if that makes sense or if it's actually, um, you know, so for instance, if your barley is at 100 and your price multiplier is one, it's 100. But if you do 1.5, then, you know, it goes 150, etc. But what you do is make sure each, fill type has a, a, uh, a value. So what I'm doing here is just make sure I know I have eight. So I have two, three, four, 
six, seven, eight. Okay. So for each item up here, it needs to have a price multiplier. And again, you know, I, I didn't change these values. I'm pretty sure how it works is if you change it to 1.5, it would just increase the value of it. So it, it, it would give you reason to actually pallet an item like barley and actually sell it. I believe it would give you more. Uh, is how they inter is how I'm interpreting it here. Um, I don't think it's an actual quantity increaser. So, for instance, you dump in a um, thousand barley, and if you put it at 1.5, it's going to give you 1,500 barley. It's a value I haven't messed around with. I didn't don't need to at this time, but I will definitely try it in the future to see what it does um, for my own curiosity. But right now we're at eight 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 ones. And we have eight items up here, so they all match up. So they're all good. And the tip trigger is updated. So there is that. Uh, so let's go back to here. Uh, this is all updated. We didn't change this at all. Besides that, in the pallets, we saved everything. So let's just go verify. One more step. And uh, this is how I do it. You can do it however you like. I usually just grab all these files, minus the exception of the zip file. Right click, copy. Now, most of these files did not get changed. Uh, I like to store the icon, but I, I just do it to be safe. And I go to class folder, open it up to zip file. Then what I do is I just delete everything in that zip file and then paste. So I'm caught pasting all the items that we're working in our, our working folder. Well, that's interesting that's out there. Ooh, that must have been really fun. Okay, that must have got created when I did that originally. So let's open up and see what we got. See if we got our fill types of all our items. We know we had barley. All right, it's good, still showing up. Let me just load this up, make sure everything looks copacetic, everything looks fine. Everything's loading in, which is good. All right. Now, let's go to our confair. It's up here. All right, we still have 4,000 left in there, so let me pull forward. Let me just start creating another pallet here quick. Actually, I have to create another two, which is fine. I'll let that go while we go get another product. I have some corn on there, ground there, but I'll go back to here. Alright, so let's go in here. Let's add in wheat. I know this is currently only 2,000. I should probably just let it be. Otherwise, I'm not going to have a weird pallet there, but it's alright. It'll create it. Okay, we have another roughly 2,000 pallets to go. Move forward, just stop a little. And it'll start creating automatically. Just got to make sure you got a clear trigger area, I want to refer to it as, and you're good to go. So, what I can do is actually disconnect. Actually, I don't need I still need to be connected once the senti's out. So, I can actually move it. Alright, move up here, drop this down, let's check it out. Alright, now we got wheat. Let's see how this turned out. Again, no air, so we're good. So the chains all loading up. Alright. We pull on around. Did I get it? Yeah, I got it. Skosh. All right, there's a wheat pallet. Pallet wheat. See the screen at the last line in the line there. Pallet wheat. So we know that's working. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, I hopped in the same tractor. All right, because I have to move this as I'm creating pallets, because otherwise if I don't move it, it's just going to hang out there. So it should create like a two and a little over another pallet. Alright, yeah, this will be another 2,000 pallet here. Well, when I create my pallet, I'm going to go get some more product here. So we know wheat works. And again, these are all 2,000 quantity pallets. Wheat, barley. Oh, let's do it. Let me 
make sure we have at least one pallet worth of coal here. Alright, there's a little skosh of a pallet left. Should create a 487. And there it goes. In the ground. Holy cow. That's interesting. And it was just those last two. Huh. I could probably dig those out. Let's see what we can do. That could be on one hill, too. Let's see here. Alright, let's unload it here. Now, let me see if this. That one's fine. Huh. Must be in a hole here, a sinkhole. Farm. Tell you what, though, let me go see if I can get it out of the ground here. <laughs> no, sir, that, that boy is in there. That is interesting. It did not like being created there. Wow, that's never good. It's funny how those two just did that. I might need a, a big front end motor to get that guy out. Holy cow. Now, let me see here. Move this guy out of the way and I'll pull this forward. Good call, Maki. I'll have to try that. Let's bring in the unloading trailer. It should be able to scoop that guy up. Alright, let's move this forward. See, that one did fine, too. That's interesting. Huh. I will definitely try it, but we know... And here it is, creating the pallet rape. So we're good there. Um, like I said, I'm confident that the rest will work as well. Um, but now I want to do two things. And the first thing is I'm going to add the label to it. And then I'll bring in... Uh, also over the auto loading trailer to see if I can pick that up. And let me see if does this. This is this a 262 jobber. Yeah, that's that's weird. It's like it's a sinkhole or something. What I'll do is I'll save it so it saves it there. Let's do a save so I can see if it it, it might honestly when it when it spawns in when I, with a save game, it might push it back above ground as well. Okay. Next part we're going to do is add our labels so they're it's multiplayer friendly um, because otherwise it's you could look at that you can look at it but from a distance uh, at least you have a little bit of label to tell you what what's in what so there's our zip file let me get rid of that one here all right go in our class folder now what we need to do is create an add strip and then add in all the logos so, what I'm going to do is just double verify here. I actually just created a, a, a folder called Logos. And I'll show you guys, I'll just bring one over, for instance, and I'll show you where I got all the info from. So we'll do, uh, for instance, Barley. Hit Control. I'll actually copy the whole folder because all those files in there, and I'll just delete them out and so we can go through them one at a time. So it was in pallets, and we call this logo refresh. All right. So what I'm going to do is open, uh, get rid of the others, just for now. I'll pull them back over in a little bit. But long story short, there is, here is our barley label. Uh, of course, an update. Where I got that from was actually the data, data S2GAR folder. In there is, uh, you can extract it using zip, so you just rename it the guard to a zip. And in there you'll get some items that you'll need. For instance, like the HUD. This shows you the egg, the gold nugget, etc. Most of the items within your display for farm sim. And there is a folder called HUD fill. So it tells you all your items, uh, you know, dry grass, barley, um, 
fertilizer, etc. So what I do is I just grab the logo out of here. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. So let me show you what I did. So I created a barley one. And what I did was I actually put it on four sides. So I have one on each side of the container. Now you won't see these two, but I will scroll around so you can see them. There's that one. And then as well as one on this side. So you see these now. It's just a matter of angle, of uh, viewing angle, but you'll see them all uh, when they're brought in. Now what I did was I actually just placed them closely to where they should be on the pallet. And I'll show you what I did. So what I'm going to do, my next step is go to pallet barley. Hit this. Okay. We will go to file. And then we're going to do import. Do a logo. And here's our barley i3D. Now, what we need to make sure is that this is part of our palette. If it's out here, it may not appear. So I want to make sure it's part of the subgroup of our fillable palette. Hit control. What I want to do is hit edit, hit cut. Make sure our transform group of fillable palette is selected. Hit edit, paste. There's that. Okay. Click on our fillable palette, hit focus. And there they are. Now you have your barley logo on each side of our palette. Again, it's not, uh, might not be 100% perfect centered. I just tried to eyeball it, guys, just to give you an idea. Um, so at least you can see from a little bit of distance of where these are located. And again, this is the barley one. Uh, and then what you do is just make sure you save it. And that'll save that logo in there now. So when I go to palette barley, hit edit. It will reference our logo, uh, barley.dds. We're golden. Now, what you can do, there's two ways of doing it. This, these are such small files. So what I do is I left the i3d for the barley in here with a dds file. It's not a harm. If for some reason it disappeared, you could always pull back with this. Um, I don't think there's harm in having um, with having these extra files in here. And like I said, it's it's it, tomato tomato. I could delete them afterwards, but the, if for some reason I delete them, I, I foobar the file and the logos go away, I have the i3D to pull back in. It's two kilobytes. It's not going to kill my my uh, mod file by having that in there. It's very tiny and it's calling it right here correctly. That's all I need, I need to worry about. Uh, if for some reason this got corrupt, um, the placement of it got moved, whatever it may be, I could always go back to the original and bring it back in. It's, it's not, not going to harm anything having them there. So the barley is now done. We now have the barley labeled. Um, so we guys got to do that for the rest of those guys as well. <sighs> and you're and you're good to go. So what I'll do is I'll show you guys, since I, I already did it, I will pull this over from the one I did. Just grab my pallets. I already did the barley. Now I'm just going to grab the maize through the wheat. And again, look at the file size. And... It's not megabytes. It's not even megabytes. I mean, you're talking 40 kilobytes. And no harm in having them in here. Like I said, for some reason, I, I foobar it, which it's done. It's, I've done it before. Um, and I don't have to recreate it, uh, which is, which is you know, I think a little... It's not too hard to recreate, but I just like to have it around. There we go. There's the rest. So all we got to do in here now is we have all the logos. We had the barley done. Let's do the same for the maze. And we'll just go right down the lower the row here. Uh, make sure it's selected. Say file import. Uh, this is maze maze. Of course, when you bring them in, it's going to bring them in outside the transform group, guys. Again, just hit cut, hit edit, hit paste, and we'll do it here. And now I don't. Um, some of you guys aren't too familiar with Giant's uh, editor. If you click on the, the thing you want to focus on, for instance, I want to focus on the whole item, the whole entity of fillable palette, highlight it, and hit F for focus, and it'll pull it up. And that way you now have your corn palette. Well, I call it corn, they call it maize. You know, however you like to refer to it. But it's on all four sides. And like I said, it might not be perfect, 100% center, but you get the idea. Um, of it'll You'll know what it is from a distance. You know, and you don't have to worry about, you know, in multiplayer where you touch your forks to it, it's not going to tell you what it is. You'll be able to see from a distance. The only thing this won't tell you is the in multiplayer is the amount in there. Um, so it's not a biggie, 
but you know you'll get you get an idea uh, you know if it's full if it's half uh, etc oops okay so there's a corn our maize one is now complete hit okay we're gonna go to our potato and again this is why I'm doing a potato one outside of that I could not do this with a potato one if I left it in a default folder hence why I brought it in as, as its own entity as well hit import we're gonna go to potato there's that there's all our ad strips in their proper location. Again, I, I hit Control X on the keyboard. The reason I was showing you up here is so you can actually visually see it. Uh, and then I, all I do is I hit this and hit Control V and it's paste. And again here, do a focus to this and there's our potatoes on there. On all four sides. Again, it's not perfectly centered, but you, it at least tells you what's in there now from a distance. All right, so potato is done. On to the next one, which is our uh, rape file. Import one more time. Rape all four files. Control X. Control V. They are in place. And there's that one. Okay, that one is done as well. Pile the soybeans up next. Only a few more to do here, guys. Select our four. Control V again. Let's do here. Do focus. And it focuses in. That. And I think it looks pretty good. I was contemplating whether I wanted to do black logos or white. And honestly, I think the white pops better on the... Uh, I, I, it, the, the wood is like almost like a neutral color. It's not a dark. It's, I guess, more towards light. Uh, if I did black, I was worried about it not popping enough, so I just did it as as a white to keep the same as uh, the way it was without changing anything. Again, I think I think it looks pretty good, but there's that. All right, so we got soybean done. On to the sugar beet, sugar beet, and then sugar beets. I right, just little things that I think are I get a kick out of, like they labeled it, you know, sugar beets. So it is what it is. Control X, Control V, do a focus. And this is all done. All right, there's our sugar beets now. We got that. Again, it's the same as the in-game one. Just added the logos for now. So that's good. Let's see that. Sugar beet. Next up is sunflower. And again, like I said, I just used all the logos that are in-game. So there's nothing I didn't have to recreate the whole darn thing. File import sunflower. First four, again, I can do it this way. Cut, and just like this, and do paste, and that way you guys get to see it. And there's a Sunflower logo. So again, I think that looks pretty sharp. Oop, yeah, no, no. This hits it, there we go, all right. And last but not least is our wheat. So let's do file, do import, wheat, select our fur, select the, our ad strips, cut, edit, paste, there they are, do focus, there is our wheat logo. So there is that, hit save, okay, all those palettes are done, they're all now labeled nicely. One more time guys, just go out here, select everything minus your zip file. Do right click to copy. Okay. Go over here to our class folder where we're testing. We're going to do this. Delete out all the 20 items. Do paste. There we go. Okay, now one more item you guys want me to do was do the, here we do this one. Uh, do I have my trailer? Yeah. I also have this. Let me try this. I'll try this one with that. I haven't used this that often ever since I got my trailer. Uh, let's see here. Paste. Alright. Now, let's give this a go. And see if that extra pallet is in the ground or not. Alright. Let's highlight that. Okay, that's good. Everything's showing up. Let's check it out. And see what we got. over here 
Hop on our tractor. Nope, Palo's still on the ground. Good, alright. Let me. As you guys see, let's go over to our pallets. Ta da! There's our logos on our pallets. Hope you guys think that's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. I think it looks pretty nice. You know, nothing too fancy. But you get the idea of what's in there now without, you know, being too close to them. Alright, so let me. We wanted to try that auto loading trailer. See if it would actually pick up the ones that are in the ground. Now, I wonder if my. Let's see if my truck could equipped. I think it should be able to. Yeah, it gets, gets over there a little faster. Thanks, Gordon. Yeah, I hope you guys liked it. Like I said, I'm going to... If you do exclamation point mods in uh, chat there, you'll be able to get the link to it. I uh, put it up the way it is. Uh, so you'll be able to see it with all the logos on, etc. Uh, the one there in the link has 4,000 capacity, which we're going to do next. We'll increase capacity to 4,000 and go from there. Um, you know, I think 4,000 is probably the max, uh, and it makes the most sense to me. It's a nice, even, divisible number for... Yep, there you go. And that should be the should be the most recent one added. It's just the FS-17 Grim, RH-2460. All standard fruits and BD. Just for my initials, I added this stuff in. Well, everything else should be the same that you guys have. So the keys... The key was that one, or these two, right here, that are buried in the ground. I found a sinkhole in Gold Crest Valley. Alright, let's see what we got here now. Okay, let's see, let's see here. Pallets, work position. Oh, that's funny, it didn't pick them up. Well, let me see if I get a little closer. Oh, it did. There it goes. All right. Cool. We got him out of the ground. And this will work with the U.S. trailer as well. So don't have to fret. All right. So that's cool. That works. Let's turn off the work position. Unload. There we go. Now under above ground. Awesome. Yeah, I don't know. So that would have been saved. Good call, Maki. That was great. All right. So let's just verify. We have our logos on there. Whoopsie. I needed those. Whew. Almost had. I think I almost had to harvest the field there. For a minute. Be able to touch should be able to tell me. Let's see here, where they are. Yep, two thousand. Good, 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 good. Okay, now we're gonna. I'm gonna show you guys how to. Let me save this. Everything's there. Good deal. All right, now let's increase the quantity here, fellas. 2,000 is a nice size pallet, but 4,000 is more better. <laughs> All right. So here we go. If we go into the pallet barley, we'll start with this one. Okay. Fillable pallet. Now, in here, there's not defined a capacity. Uh, so what we need to add in, I will show you guys exactly what we need to add in. We need to make sure to add a new line that tells it, hey, we're now 4,000. Override the default. So that's what we're doing. So let me just minimize this. I'll put my other one that I already have done. Just to make sure I'm telling you guys correctly. Okay. There it is. Okay, so I will pull this aside. It is what you need to add in. If you get a pallet that doesn't have it, what we need to add in down here is called capacity, if my spelling is good tonight, 
and this is an integer. Hit add. Okay. There's a capacity. Now, you, you don't have to make it. Uh, standard is 2,000, like I mentioned. We're going to make it 4. There we go. Just make sure to click on it. Make sure it holds. Click here. Go back. 4,000. We now have integer of 4,000. The pallet of barley will hold 4,000 now. So we'll save that. Just to verify, before I go and do the rest, I'm just going to copy the pallet I, barley i3d. We, whoops, let me not do that. Let me go back to my class folder, or where I did change it, just to make sure. Make sure this held. Yep, there it is. Capacity 4,000. Delete if empty. Now this is cool. This is if this is check marked, it means when once you use up all your barley, it's gone. It's going to disappear. Delete off the map. Uh, if you say no, then it'll leave around the pallet. Um, but at least to give you an idea there. So what we'll do is we'll we're going to copy these over to our class folder where we're working out of. Go here, pallets, and do a paste. Yes, we're going to copy replace. Copy replace. Okay, let's go back in. Now the the existing ones will just have the 2,000 capacity, but it should be half full if my memory serves me correctly. It should be that way. Um, and then the new ones that we create will have the 4,000 capacity. So let's go here. Go over here. All right, let me go back. And the barley ones, there they are. These were full. You can now see they're about a half full. And I'll touch them just to make sure, and it should tell me the fill level is 50%. Let's see. If I, if I don't run them over. There we go. 2,000, 50%. We now have 4,000 barley pallets. Now, instead of creating eight 2,000 pallets, we will now have four 4,000 pallets. And I'll show you the difference here in a sec. Let me just fill up with some barley. We are away. Alright. I'll, I'll just wait here. There we go. That's fast. And now we, this little trailer now create two pallets, which is pretty darn nifty. And like I said, again, Make sure when you use this palette creator. That you hook up to it. And just say enable palette creating. Let me do it over here. I always lower. Hit the I key to enable palette creating and then just move out of the way. And you're good to go. Now, let me get my wagon full of barley. And swing around. Alright. We'll load. My wagon doesn't push too far. happen if I go and I think it I might it might foobar it let me see here I don't think it'll actually tell me here oh it does oh there we go cool so now you guys see and we're now past 2,000 mark we're on our way to four which is kind of cool all right I have oh, oh, oh. I was afraid of that all right at least got out of the way so cruise another one but you'll see I never put the forks down low enough. It's hard for me to see here like so. I can probably just zoom in, it might help a little bit. But 
as you guys see here, you really should either have a weight or a bigger tractor, you'd be good to go. I mean, going forward, as long as you keep it close to the ground, it's not too bad. But it is a little heavy. Alright, here we go. As you see, it gets my tires off the ground, and it'll start spilling. Not, it won't spill on the ground, but it'll tip me over. Now, just to show you a comparison here. See the difference? It's not even budging really that much. It's rocking a little bit, but there definitely is a value in the mass of the fill. Again, there's a difference. There's our original pallet. Next to our new pallet. 2,000 versus the 4,000. reason the wheat is still full is because we didn't change the wheat yet, and it's still only 2,000. So again, now we have to go back and just change out the wheat, and we're good to go. Let me save this. All right. Let me see here. Dropping back out, now we go to the class folder once more time. And this should be the last thing we have to do tonight here to these make them exactly like you guys got. Palette Maze, again, just go here, scroll down, add new attribute, make sure it's integer, type in a name, capacity. Add this in. Okay, capacity. Now we don't want to leave a zero, so whatever we put in here, we have to make sure it's it's uh, you know at least a value. Uh, and, and in our cases, we're doing uh, the four thousand. You can make them as much as you want. The thing is, uh, past four thousand, I'm not sure what you need to use to lift them. I mean, you might need a front end loader, um, something along that lines, because it gets it'll get pretty heavy. And even here's the in game one, like I said, the well, not the in game one, but here's the potato pallet. Just add the integer. Capacity. Hit add, go up here, change capacity to 4,000, and you are good to go. That was our potatoes going through the rape. Excuse me. Integer capacity. Add that, change capacity to 4,000. There's a rate, soybean. Uh, integer capacity. Add that. 4,000 as well. Do save, just verify, there we go. All right, sugar beet, again, just add the integer value. Integer value, capacity. Change that to 4,000. Hit save, and there's our fillable palette increase. And we just keep going along. Sunflower, and we just left. Capacity. Again, add that value. Change that to 4,000. Alright. Just verify. 4,000. Good. Do a save. Uh, sunflower and wheat. Fill a little palette. It's kind of repetitive, but this is what needs to be done, unfortunately. And capacity. And hit add. Go to here, 4,000 again. And we should all be added in. There we go. Do a save. Okay. Just verify. I did Sunflower. See, I'm pretty sure I did. Yep, there we go. Okay. 
So, all we have to do is select these. We already did borrow. I'm just going to be on the safe side. I like to do the whole folder. Uh, I'm going to do the whole pallets folder, just be on the safe side. Do a copy. Go up here to my class folder that I'm testing in. Delete the pallets folder. Paste the pallets folder. I updated. And it should be good to go. Alright, we'll close this out. Let's go back in and test it one more time. All right, we'll start it up. Now all our values should be 4,000 for the pallets, guys. Fingers crossed. And the ones that were full should be at 50%, roughly, give or take. Let's see if they give or take. So this should be uh, 2,050%. Awesome. That's that one. How about our canola? 2,050%. Awesome. This is a 4,000 one. Good. Good deal. This is great. Good, 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 good. So there we go. And let's check, just to make sure we have no errors. Uh, I haven't checked it all along. It should have loaded up my pallets in here, somewhere along the lines. Let me see. Oh, I'll keep scrolling. Let me keep scrolling. If it doesn't, it, it should be fine. There we go. Container. There we go. Pallet rate, pallet barley, pallet wheat. Good. You guys are seeing them all load in on our pallets, so we're good. There's no errors. This is, this is fantastic. So we should be good to go with this. Uh, let me see over here. All right, I did move that one pallet. That's the reason why there's only one here. Now, uh, let me see. Yeah, I can zoom in here and get a little bit better view. Yep, 4,000. Excellent. Now, let me see if I can move it. These old eyes. I try to cheat. At the pallet works, and apparently you don't like me shooting at the pallet works. Oh my goodness. There we go. And again, it gets a little bit heavier, and there it just slides right down on there. Logo's good, matches up, fill type's good, we're square on. So again, it's, it's just how you add the fill types, how you adjust the quantities, whatever you like to do. And again, you can load these manually if you can get the forks up high enough onto these trailers. Heck, I, I really wish I might think about doing it. I can see if I can do it. I don't know if I can. I thought it would be a cool idea it, oh, oh, if I could actually put one of these in the back of the truck. Um, and I don't know if it would let me take it up to the pigs or not. And I don't know how else I would get it out of the back of the truck. I think it's going to slam my truck pretty bad. Oh, that didn't look too bad. All right. Oh, oh. Mm. All right. I, I think, I think our our truck's saying uncle. Let's go try to deliver this to the pig. See how this works out. At the problem, it doesn't tell me what's in there. Which. Yes, yes. I, I always like to. I wish there. I love this truck. I really do. Um, when they first had out the seed pallets and the fertilizer pallets. I, I love, I, I know it, it's extra work, but I like the fact you can load it up in the back of the truck and take it to the farm. Uh, you know, I, you can tell this thing is definitely not happy it's in the back. It wants to tip over to the driver's side really bad. Um, but I really enjoy it. I, I like doing this. Um, there's different ways of hauling stuff around. I always try to think of new things, and I think this is pretty cool. Now, the fun part is, going to be getting it out. I don't think, is this the version? There's a version out there I thought where the tailgate goes down, but apparently this isn't the one. I don't know if the trigger's high enough. Let, let's find out. Hey, look at that. That's awesome. So you actually run up there with a, in the back of your truck and fill the pigs. Give them some barley. Pretty darn cool. I got I got a blinker on or something. Four ways around? Here we go. Uh-oh. That's all the piggies would take. I, I think the only way to get that out would be the... Unfortunately, mm, flip the truck. But, uh, there you go. I mean, that's that's why I, in, in our Gold Crest version we're playing on our server before Dave puts up his mouth. Oh, use the mouse. Oh, cool. Thanks, KW. I did not know that. 
Very cool. I don't. I need to play more. Definitely need to play more. Oh, that's awesome. There we go. No, no, no. Let's see if we can do it like. Let's see if we can do it like the old school way. Oh, no. It's just not enough. Yeah, ah, it's just not enough torque in there. I think the only way to get it out. Almost. There we go. Oh. Better not show Farmer Dan or anybody that I tipped over the. I think that had been the only cool thing is if that actually spilled out onto the onto the grass, but hey, that's alright. That's awesome. Cool. I totally forgot about the tailgate thing aspect of it. But So that's where that's where we got, guys. We got the, the now you got all your in fruit games. Uh, that'll make pallets of 4,000. Like I said, uh, just do exclamation point mods. Unfortunately, it's going to list all the mods that, that were released or modified or edited by me. Uh, but it's the top one. Uh, it's, uh, the all standard fruit conveyor. It'll look the same as the in-game one and it'll you know, do all the in-game fruits. Uh, and then once Pleasant Va PV17 is released and we get all our fruit types there, It'll, we'll be able to add those in as well. Now, in case you're wondering, um, if you weren't here in the very, very beginning, like I said, it was an impromptu show. Because um, I, you know, I want to make up for you guys for last week. Uh, this is what I was going to do last week. Um, but just the uh, darn... Uh, wasn't feeling so hot, so I want to make sure I made up to you guys this week. I know Dave's out at Christmas parties. Uh, around the holiday season, gets a little busy, and I actually had a Friday night available. And I want to make sure to jump in and show you guys what we got. So in case you're wondering, you can also fill that conveyor. Uh, it should be by shovel. Let me see if we can find... Uh, shovel's down there. All right. Which is fine. Now one thing, and it will... You know, we'll keep discussing it. Of what your guys' thought is as well. Uh, whether we should have the pallet trigger on the silos. Currently, I need a little more. Our 1857 is apparently the max. But in case you're wondering, or is ever curious, you do not have to use your wagon. You could also use your bucket, similar to um, the end game conveyor as well. Like I said, that can change. So this should work as well. And it should start producing a corn pallet. Unless I didn't hook up to it. Let's see here. Yep, enable pallet. There we go, that's why. There we go. I mean, worried there for a minute. It wasn't going to work. There we go. Like I said, you can, uh, again, dump into it with a bucket. Now, like I said, let me show you guys one last thing here. Go back over and get my forks just to show you what I'm talking about and see what your thoughts are. If you think we should add it in, I'll, I'll, I'll relay it to Dave and. I don't think it'd be too difficult to add in. And it's not going to be a full pallet. It'd be like 18,057 or 1,857 on 18. And if I my eyes, if I didn't get a little too lazy there and just use my zooming. Okay, I'm going to slide back down on my fork. The only downside of palleting it is it won't exit. Oh! Okay. I take that back. Huh. I wonder why it didn't. I, okay, well, never mind. I stand corrected, and guess we don't need to add that in. It must have been the fruit type. 
I bet you I was trying to put sugar beet or potato in there. Let me try one of these. Wow. Very, very interesting. In the tall grass. Come on. Zoom in. I am still in shock that worked. That's awesome. I'm going to probably tip this one over and get a little too carried away here. Alright, let's try it. Let's see how it works. This is barley. Look at that. Wow, I am in shock. I, I thought I tested this and it did not work. Well, that is very cool. Very, very, very cool. All right. Nice. Awesome, awesome. It had to have been the sugar beater potato. That's not accepted there. That's what my guess was. Wow. All right. Let me think. Do I have any sugar beater potato on the map? I do not, unfortunately, because that could create... Tell you what. I will add that in quick, guys, and just verify everything works. Let's double check our log. And we're all clear. The pallet maize popped up. Barley, wheat. Good deal. So what I'll do is I'm just going to save this. I'm going to go back, add in sugar beets here quick. Pick those guys up. All right. Let's go edit the... It was save game one. And go documents. My games. All right. Is it here? Yada yada yada. There we go. Alright, let's see here. 5,000. Oh, no, no, that's the prices. Eh, wrong file. Try again. Alright, so. True, true. That's a good call, Katie. I will try that. I will definitely. Let me just make sure. Fill types. All right. Animal pigs. They have theirs. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Now the question is. Let me do a search. Fine. How about potato? All right. Fine. All right. Storage. We need to find the storage. There we go. Nope, that's tip triggers. Animals, the pigs, okay. Trying to find. There we go. Storage ID. So it's a storage tool. I'll tell you what, this would be safe. Let's add it in. There we go. Let me a mail. Good deal. Oh no no, okay, I appreciate it. No, I'll keep your own. You're, you're, you're an awesome moderator. You helped uh, help me especially uh, tremendously at Twitch, man. I, I really do appreciate it. Uh, I know you helped Dajan as well. You're great, great to have around, no doubt. And play the occasional hunter game, and we had that was a blast one time. I figured who was all there. Like, I know Kaboomba was there. You were there. A couple guys. Yeah, the hunter game was fun, man. That's a blast. Alright, let's say game one. Get those up. Alright, let's give this a try now. So, what I'll need to drag along with me is, first off, I'm going to have to find... I'll have to take one of these nifty little tractors and go and get some to the train station here. So let me see if it's over near 11. Uh, well, I'm gonna go south here first. Thank God for no repair mod. All right. Notice two 
train station's over here. There's one outside of town, which I guess is uh, east of 17, and then south of 11. Uh, or right along 11, I should say. And then there's one up near Piggies. So let's see which one I, I put the, the potatoes in, the sugar beets. See how I did. See if my luck runs true. Wait, no, no. Hey, all right, we found it. That is good. So now we need to bring over. All right, what do I want to bring? Uh, forklifts and this conveyor. And we should be good to go. Probably shouldn't be all frozen with this little bitty bitty tractor, but eh, what the heck. I'm asking for a world of hurt. Oh, especially with a conveyor? Uh, eh, well, hold my beer. I'll try some. I guess the key is to keep the speed up. Oh, oh, oh. See how this works out. Might have a good point there, KW. Maybe we'll try it. Yeah, yeah, I... Oh, I know, man. I... I figure I'm out of... If I go along the railroad tracks, I'm guaranteed to get there eventually. I figure, what the heck? <laughs> Alright. Oh, boy, oh, brother. Alright, let's put this down. Let's enable our pallets. Pallets enabled. There we go. Yeah, I definitely need to have, uh, you know, like the Dukes of Hazard playing while I'm going off-road in here. Alright, start filling. Let's do sugar beet. There we go. Now we increase our quantity to 4,000 on each pallet. Now I have two pallets to create. That should be good. Let's see here. Unload. I really don't understand how they did their brain planes in a conveyor, but it works. Alright. Sugar beet it is. Inside here, I make it inside the building. How about that? That is awesome. That's problem. Probably the problem I came across. Because I was trying to load sugar beets or potatoes at the main farm silo. That just totally didn't work. Very cool. So that does work. Awesome. So happy for that. that. That still had me a shock. That's great. Now, let's try... Uh, potatoes got to work, too. Let me see here. The log file. We're clean. As you guys see out here, I'll keep it up a little longer. So you're seeing all the pallets. So anything like lowercase p pallet with the uh, next letter capitalized as a product, it's all loaded in fine. Uh, and again, I like to see this. There's, there's no errors. Um, everything's loading up great. That's awesome. Glad to see. 
I even added in that, that auto-loading trailer, and it didn't, that doesn't have any problems with it either. Up. Then I'll go grab some sugar beets. Huh. I lost one sugar beet along the way. There we go. That, that works cool. I can probably sit down and leave it, right? I get off my forks. That is the key. I'm gonna flip it across the room. I might as well just wait. <laughs> Bit like a slingshot. All right, good deal. Now, I see that over here. Let's try potatoes, and then we can call this sucker finished. You guys go and use it on your maps, and feel free do whatever you like to it. I just I just want to show you basically how to add the basic stuff, and again, if you want to add another fill type, feel free. Alright, we're going to go with potato. That's the last one we got to try out. This bad boy. Go fill that sucker up. The only thing I don't like is that trigger seems to be a little bit too close to what I like, but I guess it's realistic. Huh. It stopped filling potatoes? Well, that's interesting. All of a sudden it just stopped? Hmm. I've never seen that before. Must have been that close to the trigger. Maybe they had an earthquake at Goldcrest Valley here. Alright, potato pallet, load it up. No problem. No issues at all. Good deal. Alright, we got one done. Now let me see if I can just make sure the pallets don't load in the silo. We're good to go. Like I said, anything past 4,000 I think would be uh, in trouble and definitely need a weight, or, or weight would be required. I mean, Awesome. That is so cool. Good deal. Good deal. Yes, sand and gravel. Absolutely. <laughs> In the pallet form, I think that'd be a little crazy. Yeah, I got you, man. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. I, I definitely can see, uh, you know, like I said, this is mostly, I thought, for like the feeding of the animals. If you don't feel like, you know, if you don't want to leave a wagon up with the pigs filled with the product, you, know, you can always dump a pile and run a you know, shovel up there. Um, but if you wanted to, you just, you know, leave the conveyor up there, go up there, dump items in, make make conveyors all the products, and run them to the pigs. I mean, you can run the... The key is, I found out, it doesn't like... It's a certain set amount of where it likes to... The amount of pallets in there. And once that happens, you got to restart your game. Um, same way where, like, if you use the auto-loading script trailer next to the conveyor... If you take a pallet that's filling out of that trigger, it doesn't recognize that you took the pallet out and you have to restart the game for it to be, to be filled up there. Let me see if I can run this. But, you know, our, our, my original intention was to actually just do it for the pigs. And I'll run this up here quick. I think I'm pretty sure piggies take potatoes. Let me just double check here. Animals. Yep, they're good. All right, let's take them up. Yeah, I was thinking some other way to do, do, you know, do. I would like to use that conveyor, the scripting they have in it, um, on another item. Like if we could build that in the map for factories, that'd be so cool. We could have, you could decide, you know, whether you want to palletize or not. Similar to what we did with rivers, with uh, the Russian scripting stuff. I mean, it, was, it was a great thing to have. I mean, it's fun. It's a different way of doing things. It would be cool, like I said, if that price multiplier actually worked out better. So if you say, okay, it's a one and a half times or two times the value, if you get it palletized, that would be really awesome. Because then it'd be, it's more incentive to palletize it. You know, our, my original thought when I did this is, 
Um, you know, when obviously Giants just added potatoes and sugar beets, you could have their 2,000 pallet up here. You know, you just stack them up and bring them up with the auto loading trailer, drop them off. Um, you know, but like I said, I have all these pallets up here, and I can just go in here and there it just starts emptying out. There, that's all right. There's already filled. Yep, 405. All right, that's good to go. And I just figured you just leave them up here. In worst case scenario, you can just push them in with any vehicle. You don't even need a front end loader. Uh, you can just have any vehicle and just push them right in, and, and you're good to go. Um, again, this is again all Giants mods. All I did was edit it out to add in uh, all the standard fruit types. I don't know why they didn't do this from the beginning. Uh, I think it's probably more to keep the object number down on the console version. I could be wrong, uh, but regardless, uh, PC Frick guys will now have this. So. But that's what we got for tonight. Um, any questions, comments? Uh, I'm not sure if Dajan's going to be doing a job, uh, a job, a show tonight. He, uh, is a Christmas party. As he mentioned before, I know it'd be later. Uh, let me see. You know, it's currently 10:10, so um, I'm not sure what his current status is. Yes, uh, Gordon. Let me show you. I don't know if I have the. Let me think here. Uh, I might have all the server mods. Let me see. I might be able to jump on. All right. Now, let's see if I have all the mods. I can show you. It will load. Uh, the wood pallets will load. Just be careful not to do it on load center. Uh, because basically, when you load them up with the auto-loading script, they're a non-collisionable entity. So they will not... Uh, interfere with one another. It'll look ugly. It does. It really does because they now created how they create their wood pallets and how they create the pallets in game are similar, which is good and not good. So basically, your footprint of where the pallet sits. And I, I realize, let me see here. See, oh boy, what happened here? All right. All right. Yeah, I don't have all the current mods, unfortunately. Oh, is that all I need? Okay, hold on one second, guys. I will get the one mod required. I'll go on there. Yeah, yeah, allow access. Um, I realize you're going to see the server password, but don't. it doesn't really bother me because uh, it is what it is. But let me see if I have the one mod required to freeze. All right. But it will take them. Uh, it will load them up now. It's going to look fugly. But the problem is the footprint of the pallet is correct. Uh, it's just currently all the pallets are like uh, the miscellaneous pallets in 15. So it'll load them all up. Uh, unless I, uh, What I can do is talk with Dave and we're going to have to rename how the pallets are named uh, for sawmill. Um, like we did similar to 15 uh, where we had to do it different for cogent. Uh, this is named a little differently. Welcome. So you have Wibsy17. Thanks for the follow. So you will have uh, a different type, so it won't they won't overlap. Uh, let me see here. But I will load up the server. But as soon as they do come with an update, I can, like I said, I can I'd have to modify the sawmill file uh, because of how it's called. Uh, I can show you that how it works as well. But let me see here. All right. Is that I realize you guys see the password. It is what it is. It's, there's nothing special in there anyway. Uh, the map is not released anywhere. So let me just go in and show you. Hopefully we have a wood pallet around uh, to show you guys. Uh, but I'll show you how the naming convention works. Uh, so you get an understanding. But here, let me just show you that it works. Yeah, I'm sure you guys know it works. But uh, I'll just show you and show you what I mean by unloading center. Um... That it's gonna, it has. Once you unload center, it gives it back its its collision mass, sort of say, or collision uh, properties, and it just goes nuts. It'll throw them, but it'll still load them. It just won't look pretty uh, because it's all referenced this pallet. All right, it's nighttime in here. Uh, let me go over here and see if we got it. I haven't been on here in quite some time. That's some pigs. All right, let's go over here. Oh my goodness, we got a lot of equipment now. There. Can I enter this? There we go. Alright, there's that set up. Let me see. I know. Alright. Alright, 
Is that? No, no, that's placeable. That's for the wood chip storage. All right, look over here. It was over here, unless he got rid of it. Let's see here. Oh, they're still there. There's one. All right. So that will help. I can at least show you that it works. It just won't look so pretty. So let me hunt down an auto loading trailer. I thought there's one over here. Man, this. Daddy got tons of stuff over here. All right. I think. Hey, Barber's truck. Alright, he's using that one. There it is. Alright. Let's run his truck over here and pick up some wood pellets. fan of this truck here. Let's see here. Oh, oh, I don't know. I hit a door. Alright, Cricket Sway is rounding about. I'm going to actually wipe him in here. I'm going to show you guys his swamp that he did. It really cool. This is, uh, again, Dede's, uh, who's part of, uh, the crew, who, uh, is editing the Goldcrest map. He's doing a really nice job. And actually, it's funny, it's Dave uh, Dagenet is stealing some ideas from him, so it's kind of, kind of cool. He's just doing really good work. Now, he did do a map. My motor's running the wrong way. Taking a long way, but... Uh, Daddy did a map in 15. It just, uh, he never released it. It's unfortunate. It's a really cool Canadian map of his own, you know, around his area where he grew up. But... Let me take the long... I could turn there also. That's all right. Taking a scenic route. Hopefully not... Hopefully darkness is set in here. Boy, this truck steering is definitely rough. It's probably realistic, to be honest with you, but... Alright. Head over here where the sawmill was, and the sawmill has now disappeared. But and I believe you just put it on pallets, and it should pick it up again. It doesn't look pretty. There's a pile of sawdust there. So let's change this to pallets. Head uh, work position. And there it goes. As you guys see, it does load up, but that's what I'm talking about. Is the base, the how to describe it, where the forklifts go in. So basically, the pallet itself, uh, it, it, the footprint is fine. The problem is the boards that overhang. Uh, and as and when they load up, they're non-collisionable, so they're not a problem. But the problem is when you say, for instance, do work position, do on load center. Okay, so we leave it where it's at, just say on load, you'll see what happens, and there it goes. So basically the, the collision of the pallets themselves come back, and it'll just teeter on there. And then when there's a lot of pallets, it gets a little more wonky, uh, as the term goes. Um, but that's that's what it is. So all you do is this, all you gotta do is load it up, and then make sure you just don't unload center, and, and you're good to go. So we'll do the work position, we'll change this, and we'll hit unload. And there it goes. And it just falls out in the ground. So it will work, yes, without a doubt. Um, it just looks a little, it looks bad because it'll overlap. And, and unfortunately, it's because of the footprint of the pallet. Um, what I have to do is actually do a separate category uh, for the, the UAL script and pretty much make it its own and add my own nodes in separately. So it'll tell it, hey, each pallet goes here, space it out accordingly, stack them, do two layers if you want to, etc. Uh, let me go down here. And I'll show you guys day days. There's our auto loading truck. I should be able to take this down there. There we go. 
Oopsie. If I could drive. Go back here and what he's calling the swamp, which I think is pretty darn cool in my opinion. In the end, this is what Dadness will probably end up looking like. But for now, this is what our swamp looks like. Then you travel in there and we'll say, you know, do not drive too deep. Uh, at one point, he had fallen trees in here. We can actually cut as well. So it's really neat. Oh, here's a fallen tree over here. And he added a rock in here. Really cool stuff. Um, during the day, it's really neat because that's grass growing in, in, the, in the ground. Um, so, I mean, that's that's pretty darn cool in my opinion. This is what, this this is a smaller version of what uh, most likely we'll have in 17, PB17, but I just at least wanted to show you that for there now. Oh, let me go back down. I can show you this too. The only thing we're trying to figure out, which I think is just one of those things, unfortunately, if I can drive again. It's just when you're in the water, they don't like you cutting underwater. So if I squat down, you can get, but it won't let you go. See how it's hitting the water plane there, the top of the water plane? It won't let you cut down below the water plane. So unfortunately, you just cut. If you just stand up and cut, or you cut in an angle right near the water plane, you'll be able to drop the tree right there. So you will be able to do that. Um, but I thought this is a pretty cool area to have. Nice little swamp logging area. Oh, I gotta clean up my stumps. Yes, I got Stumpville over here. equipment back before guys come in and think there was a hijacker. That is a great question. That is a good question. I'll have to try that. I haven't tried that. I will run this back and I'll see if I can fill it. Through. I'm pretty sure you could. Uh, it says do not drive too deep, but let me check it out. Alright, let me see here. All right, I'm going to cheat. Let me see if it'll let me cheat here. Um, well, let me do it. There we go. Guys didn't see that. <laughs> so much closer to home. Do it this way. And just add it back in. Cow farm. There we go. Run us back over, and I will try out the water. That is a good question. I will go over and try it out. Let me see, take this back over here to the cow farm. There goes O.J. Simpson and his well, bluish, whitish Bronco. I just feel they need a road right there. Uh, nice addition. There's this big old wall around his cow farm there. That's nice. All right. Let me return this where I got it. Make sure I don't get yelled at. Got all the hardworking farmers around here. Alright, that's returned. Now, water tanker. That is a good one. I will try it out. Pretty sure yes is the answer, but I don't want to tell you wrong. Well, if I could actually back up underneath of it, it would be good shape. Oh, that's our water. Darn it. All right. We're full. Let me go see if the cows need some here quick. I missed that feature, Maru, 
uh, where you just dump, unload whatever you have in there uh, immediately. I'm sure they'll work on getting that fixed here soon. Cow's thirsty. All right. Good deal. Just enough to go over and try it. All right, that's good enough. Uh, a great demand for something here. I'm not careful, I'm going to end up in the water. Alright, let's see if we can fill from the swamp. Thinking you should be able to, and I want to say yes, but I always want to test before I answer for sure. This time I'll try not to take the longest route there. Or put the truck in the creek, I guess you'd call it. Not really a river. Say. <laughs> yes, oh, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I mean. It's good and it's bad to have, you know, it would almost be nice to prompt you to say, are you sure you want to do this? But, unfortunately, I'm not sure how to, it'd have to be put in. Um, you know, it would almost be like, um, like an extra warning, but I, I just don't want to be able to incorporate that into the scripting. Alright, let me go down here to the swamp, see if we can fill up some fresh swamp water. That was probably the smartest way to go down over there, but oh well. Alright, don't. Yep, there you go. Good call, Donna. That is. There you go. Fill up. Great call. I never realized that. That's awesome. So I will fill this up and take it back. Back over to oh boy, <laughs> now the fun part. Oh brother, yeah, I just don't see this happening. Oi, might need another find another way out. A little bit heavy now, and I'm pretty sure if you reset this, it gets empty. Uh, my thing. All right, let me take the shorter over here. All right, definitely a long way now. That's cool. so we got left to buy here. Field three and four, sixteen. Well, still have a couple fields to go. Grabified, yes, yes. Yes, this truck is definitely lacking uh, the gravification. Oh, thank goodness. I thought that truck was going to turn in front of me. That would have been pretty, pretty nasty. Oh, yeah, as you see, Goldcrest Valley is now Goldcrest Valley, or Val A, because we have Canadian flags flying on our, on our map. Once I return this, <laughs> I 
<laughs> right, Amaki? Something, man. That, that's just a steep hill. It's meant for a good old swamp logging and not so much for uh, draining the swamp, I guess, per se. I'll return us up here to the cow farm. Is if I don't miss my turn. I need like a sign from the main road saying, uh, yeah, as you see there, there's your Canadian flag. So since our, our map editor is from Canada, he uh, made sure we edited the Canadian flag in for him. Actually, Dadgenet did. Whew, we got some kind of bad cost here, down 700 bucks. Oh, you know what? That's right, it probably cost me money to fill from the swamp. It's that extra filtered swamp water. Charge a premium for it. Uh. Oh boy. I want to turn away. It's a keyboard backing up syndrome. semi-straight for the semi-tracker. Uh, I don't know. I'll put this here for now. Alright, let me log out of this game here. And I'll show you guys one last thing I'm talking about with that auto-loading script with the pallets how it's going to have to change. And a pretty dramatic change of how they're produced and how they're named. Um, and then I'm going to probably call it a night here. Uh, I've been on chewing your guys here for now two hours, two and a half hours, which is good. And then, uh, you know, I'm going to try to be back on next week for another convert uh, from 15 to 17. I think is a pretty cool one. Uh, but let me get into the documents here. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. For the trailer, uh, I don't want to make you go too crazy, but I'll show you at least in the XML. There is just uh, scroll down here. Okay, there's our tension belts. So if you ever want to know how to put tension belts in, I could show you that as well sometime. But basically, here's all the bail. They're called bail joints. How they refer to them. So you have your rounds. Uh, you have your squares, your rounds. Uh, your center, wool, the Ultima ones, your HD bales, which they haven't created yet. But if I scroll down here, you see hay bales, the Ultima bales, and all these are already placed. I just need a baler to produce the HD bales. As you see in the HD bales, there's a lot of items. And then down below is how they label the wool pallets is actually the same way they do the pallets for the sawmill. So it's good and bad. Uh, unfortunately. So let me show you how it's called. I don't want to go too crazy here. Here's, it's like a, it's basically it's, it's the wool, it's a joint. So if I go find pallet, you will find, do a search, find, let me do, let me see if I find, it. there we go. How it does wool pallet and fillable pallets. So basically how it's labeled it is, is a fillable pallet. So if I open up that sawmill, it'll be labeled as a fillable pallet. So it's gotta be changed somehow um, as far as the suffix goes. It needs to be something else. Um, and you see how it's, it, it keeps popping them up and it, right here, uh, object. The X is a fillable pallet. Um, down here is telling you the round bales, the HD bales, etc. Um, and it tries to grab information from it. And unfortunately, it's the same, listed the same way. Uh, I will open the sawmill just to show you guys. Let me just do a quick new folder. I will grab the sawmill out of the mods folder and show you how they're created. And let me see here. See if I can find that. Date modified. Should be one of the more recent ones. Sweeper, placeable, blah, blah, blah. Here it is. So I'll copy this out. 
We'll bring it over to a new folder just to show you. I'm gonna I'll trash this folder really quick. And we go here and do copy and paste all these entities out here. You can extract however you like to do it. And then it should be the palatin, and there it is. Right there is how it's labeled is board palette. So anything labeled palette with the extension, it's gonna pick it up. See how it's filled with a palette? And that and it's good and bad. Um so I'm gonna have to rework either the palette type name or something uh so it'll be somewhere different. So when I place them on so as you guys see it now, how it is, uh, and it's actually classified, in case you're ever wondering, it's wood chips, and it's 4,000 capacity wood chips. Um, but let me go back to my truck here, and I can show you, or the trailer, not the truck. Go here, the US trailer. I'll show you what I had to do for all those node points, which is a pain in a batuski, but it turned out nice. So in here, there is one called Autobots, and it's no no Decepticons, unfortunately. Uh, but here's all, in case you're ever wondering of what it's taking, uh, I had to go and replace the square and the round bales, and here they all are. So mathematically, I had to figure out each one a distance between to the next row, which is a pain in the butt for the squares. Squares wasn't so bad. You just have to sit down with your calculator and make sure your spacing is correct. So there's the rounds. Rounds are the same way. So here's the amount of bales. You know, basically the this number will be, uh, you know, there's 32 bales. You know, it's one less than what's shown over here in the index. So when we get to, <laughs> there's pallets. And again, unfortunately, see how the pallets are spaced out? They are super close because it's looking for the footprint. This is only basically meant to grab wool pallets at the moment. Uh, and then when the time comes, when the Ultima Baylor does get released, as well as the HD Baylor, um, I will adjust these accordingly. Currently, these aren't adjusted, and you'll see how far forward they are on the trailer. These will have to be scoshed forward towards the front of the trailer, up this way a little more, when I actually get the diameter and all the more information of the bales available. Uh, I'm sure the spacing is correct. I just like to see them available, so when I do test it in-game, uh, that I can see how they line up. Now, everybody asks me what these HD bales are. I'm not sure what the definition of HD bales are. My understanding, of, just by looking at, okay, just to give you an idea, uh, the little square baler, I think that was in 15, I think these are it, and here's why, is the HD bales, check out this, check out the amount of little, I mean, I'm not kidding, there's, well, let's see here, we'll get to the end. And the magic number is, 389. So what's it, what's that telling you? Is there's 388. Take one less. It's 388 bales that would be fit under this trailer, and it's those little square bales. So I'm gonna have to do a good amount of work when the time comes when these are released, because here's the front. So just to show you how they're stacking up, and they're moving along. <laughs> so this is definitely gonna be a, a whopper. This is gonna be the, the doozy to do. But it will be it, it'll be done. Not a worries. Like I said, I just gotta figure out how this one's classified as pallets and get it done differently. Right now it's just worked out for like the wool pallet, the pig feed, the water uh, uh, fertilizer, the seed, etc. All the pallet footprints will be the same. The problem is like I said, is the sawmill pallets are, are huge. Um, they will load, auto load, they will auto unload. It's just they're going to overlap. They might freak out a little bit. It might be teeter totted, but it, it'll still auto load, um, you know. Fortunately, um, so that's what I got for you guys tonight. Uh, you know, I chewed your ear off now for over two and a half hours. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, if you do exclamation point mods there, uh, the that'll that'll be the Dropbox to all the mods that I converted or modified so far for 17 uh, the Grim RH again all standard fruits ASF underscore BD has been added on 12.9 um, I'm gonna try to do another convert next week like I said I have one I think some it's, it's a mod next week I'm gonna convert um, it's either gonna be people gonna love it or people gonna hate it I know there are a few guys on our server that loved it uh, and again, it's 50-50. 50% of the guys loved it, 50% of the guys hated it. 
no problem, guys. I, you know, I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, like I said, you know, hope it wasn't too boring and, and not too dredging. But now you get some nice, fancy-looking pallets on your farm and go to it. And like I said, add your own stuff. If you want to add chaff, if you want to add silage, whatever you want to add, hey, straw, grass, whatever, go to it. Uh, just remember to add it in. Whatever item you're adding in, just make sure to add it. Uh, in your grim. No problem, guys. Thanks, thanks for uh, swinging by on a Friday night. I know, like I said, Dad and I had a Christmas party, so I just wanted to, you know, make up for last Friday that I missed out on you guys. Uh, and just make sure, like I said, when you add your fill type, make sure to add it in here: grass, um, silage, whatever it may be. Make sure it's here. Add your price multiplier of one in here, and then create the palace like we did with the barley and all the other fruit types, and you're good to go. You know, if you need a help, shoot me a message on the forums. I'll help you out. Uh, no problem at all. You know, um, we're here to help. We're here to make this game more enjoyable. You know, help each other out. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions, post it on the forums. I'll make sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Um, that's all I got, guys. Uh, thanks for stopping by, and uh, I'll be back next week uh, to do a mod. Like I said, love it or hate it, you guys. I think, uh, you know, for the people that love it, you'll have it at 17 very shortly if all goes well. And if you hate it, you don't have to worry about downloading it. So I will catch you guys later. Have a great night and a great weekend, and be safe.